Hello all, very good morning. In today's topic, we will discuss regarding the demography cycle. So before that, I want to discuss you regarding what are the benefits of this uh, demography, then we will move on to the demography cycle. So coming to the topic here, so benefits of this uh, population statistics. So every society today, it, it is feeling a need and necessity for the collection of population statistics. So there are different types of benefits when you have particular data regarding the society or any community. So for example, if you want to include any kind of health services or if you want to provide any kind of service to the community, first of all, you should know how many number of population are living there. So if you know the amount of population who is living over there, you can estimate what is the need of the population and how much amount is required for the population. So here, what if you have the statistics of the population, there are some of the benefits. For example, if you if you see here, we have social benefits, we have economic benefits, we have political benefits, and we are including the other benefits also. So what are the social benefits? What are these economic benefits? And what are these political benefits? We will see now. So coming to the social benefits. So it helps us mainly in finding out the causes of mortality. So, for example, what is the uh, why the people are dying there? So, if you have if you have the statistics over there, so it helps us to find out what is the linguistic behavior of the people, and it helps us providing the facilities such as schools and hospitals. So, what is the social benefit here? So, when you have data regarding a community or regarding a society, so you have seen one particular place, there are a group of people who are living over there, and if you have if you have particular data, like if the if the population is like ten thousand or uh, 20,000 or 30,000 then you can go for what is the health requirement over there so what is the food cost for that community what is the food production that need to be produced for that community so what kind of services can be given how many hospitals can be established how many schools can be established whether there is need for the construction of homes or not whether there is need for the construction of road lines or not so you can know so whenever you have a proper, a proper statistical data you can go according to the data you can, you can form a plan for that community so that the services which were given by the government or the services which has to be received by the community are met in a proper manner so if you see here so if whenever you have the social benefits so, so whenever you have this social statistics here so if the mortality rate is high you can go and estimate there you can conduct some surveys so because we know what is the total amount of population we can plan in how many days we can complete the program in how many days we can go to the society you can in how many days we can get the answers back so that we can see why the mortality rate is increasing whether it is increasing because of any kind of disease whether it is increasing any kind of any risk factors whether it is increasing increasing because of any abnormal social behavior so all these things can be seen with this social benefits whenever you have proper statistics Nextly, what are the economic benefits with the help of this social statistics means? Mainly, it helps us to find out the industrial progress. So, what is the progress of the industry? So, how many industries can be established over there for a particular population? How many, how much employment can be created over there? How much need can be processed? What is the living standards? All these things can be known here. So it helps us to find out the living standard of the people. So whenever the people are having proper jobs, they will be having proper economic status. If there is proper economic status, automatically the living standard of the people will increase. So that's what it is. The statistics are mainly focusing on the economic benefits. So it identify new sources of tax collection and revising and modifying the existing tax structure. So if the people who are living in a particular area, if they are receiving amount more a number of amount, so the government it can collect some tax from those persons who are uh, receiving more amount. So when the tax is coming, the ruling where the people are having lower life standards, where the people need to get services from these taxes, the government can meet the needs of other people. So if these people are earning less amount and they are having more number of taxes, so again the life standards will be coming down. So in such cases, it, it helps in revising and modifying the existing tax tax structure so these are some of the economic benefits and it, it helps us to know the food needs of the nation and, and take steps to solve so whenever whenever you are having the economic data so we can get we can know what is the food need so if they are capable of are they are capable of 
uh, keeping amount for the food or not whether they can buy their own food or not or the government has to provide the food so all these things can be taking place over there and the mainly economic benefits they are providing facilities such as transportation and communication so these are the benefits of this uh, so statistics whenever population statistics whenever you have these population statistics you can go for social benefits so you will get the data from the social benefits you will get the data from the economic benefits next we will see what are all the political benefits so with the help of the population statistics mainly the politicians or the government they can go for planning process of this uh, election so whenever they have proper statistical data so how many number of votes uh, voters are there and how many booths can be provided over there to get the voting registered so how many constitutions need to be established whether the constitution need to be big or whether the constitution need to be small so depending upon the area depending upon the size of the population depending upon the income per capita all these things will be coming under this political benefit so that they will plan the constitutions they will plan how many number of of MLAs how many number of MPs can be allocated for that particular region they can plan for the border border areas of that region and they will get the elections done and the government can rule in a easy manner so constitutions are delimited only on the basis of available population statistics so if you see based on the number of population based on the number of people the constitutions are being made here so whenever the government is having the statistical data here the constitutions can be made and they can be delimited because they are mainly basing upon the population statistics. So coming to the other benefits, so total usage of population statistics is very high. So if you see here, uh, whenever you have proper data, so if you have how many number of children are present in the community if you have the data how many children need to be studied so then you can go for opening of schools, you can go for employment centers, you can go for what is the food need of the community then you can uh, mainly they will help us to formulate new programs and they, they will help us to give changes in the programs which were already established because if you see the constitution which we are following it was formed like like so many years ago and the programs that were still in the community they were formed years ago but the population has changed dramatically so there was greater increase in the population and lesser in the needs so the need then whatever the need is there in the community it was not meeting properly so if you want to get those things so you need to have this population statistics so if you have proper population statistics then you can go easily for the needs that to be changed so it gives us better clues in introducing the policy changes so whenever you are doing a policy for example you want to give policy if you, if you want to give a free treatment for some particular disease like coronary heart disease or whenever people meet, met with accidents you want to give free medical uh, facilities in all over the state or all over the country so you need to have population so if you need to if you have the population status if you are able to estimate the number of accidents or number of diseases or number of cases that are occurring every year or every day then you can estimate the amount that need to be produced in the pro program then you can go for the program implementation so these are the benefits of having social statistics or population statistics now we'll move on to the demography cycle so if you see this demography cycle since this demography cycle is uh, giving us what are all the stages so how, how is the birth rate how is the death rate whether it is in a stationary manner or it is in a declining manner so we will discuss clearly so every nation in the world so whatever the country is there in the world they are mainly going through five stages of this demographic cycle so here first stage is like high stationary so if you see this stage this stage is categorized by uh, characterized by high birth rate and high death rate so there is no change in the population so if you see here the number of persons who are uh, the number of births that are occurring are equal to the number of deaths that are occurring in the community so there is no change in the population there is no change in the population so India was in this stage till 1920 so this is the high stationary stage means the always the number is in an equal manner so if you have 100 people dying every day for example 100 deaths are occurring every day at the same time 100 births are occurring every day so if the total population is 20,000 for example I am saying if the total population is like 20,000 in this 20,000 population if 100 people are dying again the population is coming like 19,900 so again if there is 100 births that are occurring again the population is like becoming like 20,000 so it means 
the stage the phase is in a stationary phase so this is the first stage of any country that is undergoing this demographic cycle second stage is early expanding so in this early expanding what is happening the the death rate begins to decline and the birth rate no change and it remains unchanged so the population expanding so for example if you take that uh, first example itself so as i am saying if the if the population of the community is 20000 here what is happening the death rate is coming down so for example the death rate is coming down like 50 percent and the birth rate is like 100 percent so here what is happening there is declining means decrease in the death rate from 100 people uh, 100 people dying every day it came to 50 people and the birth rate remains stationary there so every day there were 100 births that are occurring but the death rate has come down little bit means it was like 50 so if the population so in this 20000 population if 50 people are dying then the population count will be like so 19550 19, again here what is happening the 100 births are occurring for this 19550 if you add 19 uh, for this 19550 if you add 100 it is becoming like 2001 2050 so here there is expanding in the population so the number of population is increasing while the number of deaths are decreasing so this is called as early expanding stage so hope you understood uh, nextly we'll see late expanding so this is the third stage here so the birth rate begins to decline while the death rate further decreases and continues to increase in population so if you see our country india it has entered into the stage it means it, it is appearing that it has entered into the stage so i'll explain you what is for a same example i'll take so if you take this 20000 population in this 20000 population the birth rate began to decline so uh, for example if you say uh, from 100 births every day if the birth rate has came to like 70 births every day and the death rate from 50 persons who were dying every day it came to like 30 persons so what is happening here so the in this total population means if the if the population is 30 20000 and if 30 deaths are occurring so here it will be like 19900 and mm, 70 so in this 19970 again there were 70 births that are occurring so here if you see in this 19970 if the 70 population are again if the 70 births are occurring if you are adding them it will be like approximately 2040 so likewise the death rate here the birth rate is increasing and the population rate is like in a constant manner means it is expanding but it is expanding very slowly so it is called as late expanding so hope you understood here so nothing but here the death rate is decreasing further and the birth rate is also coming little down here so here while the death rate is decreasing further and the birth rate is also reducing little bit so here the population will grow but it will grow in a slow manner means it is called as late expanding so nextly we'll say what is this low stationary it is the fourth stage here so this stage is characterized by low birth rate and low death rate and the stability in population so here there will be decreased death rate and there will be decreased birth rate and the population will, will be in a stable manner will be in a stable manner when it is compared to the late late expanding or early expanding so in fifth stage it is called as the phase of declining here uh, the birth uh, the stage the birth rate is lower than the death rate fall in population so birth rate is becoming very low and the death rate is becoming very high here so these are the phases which were included in the demography cycle it's very simple so hope you understood here so i'll show you what is the table here so if you see in stage one the birth rate will be higher as well as the death rate will be higher so india was in this stage till 1920 so in stage two early expanding here the birth rate is in a higher manner means it is it kept on increasing but the death rate is started decreasing so the countries like south asia and africa are in this stage so if you come to the stage three so it is late expanding so here the birth rate has decreased a little bit and the death rate it has decreased further so if you see here the countries like india china and singapore are at this stage so in this low stationary here the birth rate is also decreasing and the death rate is also decreasing in the same manner so here the countries like uk denmark sweden are these are the countries who are in this stage 
nextly what is the stage 5 means here it is the declining stage so in this declining stage here the birth rate has decreased further but the death rate has become slow so the countries like german germany and hungary are at this stage so what is the demographic cycle here now we'll see what is the demography cycle as we are discussing it is high stationary early expanding late expanding low stationary and phase of decline so you you can see it in the other slide here so as i'm saying in high stationary the birth rate is increasing as well as the death rate is increasing in the same pace so the birth rate and the uh, death rate are in the same pace so if you see the early expanding here here the birth rate is increasing but the death rate started decreasing so the birth rate is increasing here the death rate is started declining so coming to the late expanding stage in this late expanding stage you can see here the birth rate is decreasing the death rate is decreasing further so here in late expanding the birth rate is decreasing and the death rate is decreasing further so if you come to the low stationary phase in this low stationary the birth rate and the death rate they are decreasing equally so in this low stationary the birth rate is e decreasing in the birth rate is equal to the decreasing in the death rate if you say come to the phase of decline here here the birth rate is further declining and the death rate is declining in a slower manner so this is the demography cycle so if you have any queries you can drop them in the comment box or you can whatsapp me and I, I would like to thank all of you for listening the classes carefully so if you like the content please like share and subscribe the channel thanks for the support thank you so much